Hi guys, uh, welcome to Raza Summit. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to effectively test your chatbot. I'm, by profession, I'm a QA and I have over a decade and a half years of experience in QA. Chatbot uh, QA has been not in the limelight until uh, 2018 when the Raza uh, came on board and then we actually tested the first feature wherein we migrated dialogue flow uh, you know, stories to Raza. That's where the journey for me started. Uh, so today, let's see. Um, so I've divided this into three phases. One is uh, how are we right now doing the QA? Uh, this is from uh, the experience that I've got gathered, uh, talking to uh, and consulting in various companies and uh, working on the the chatbot platforms. And uh, the second phase, we'll see that uh, what are the issues in QA, basically. Everybody thinks that uh, QA is simple, obviously it is not. Uh, and then the third one is that how we can effectively test it and what the things that are required for the QA to be effective. Some KPIs at the end uh, uh, to close the session. Uh, so let's see uh, how are we doing our QA today. So. Uh, Right now, most of the QAs in the bigger organizations are all manual. When I say manual, uh, you know, it's really, really complex. And uh, why? what are they basically testing in the organization? They're basically testing the conversation. So it's just a simple QA. &A. So what they would do is uh, they will have a list of uh, stories, uh, the expected conditions, and then they will uh, put it uh, on the chatbot platform. And then obviously, just understands what's the actual result. So <clears throat> right now, uh, in manual testing, uh, there are variations in the scenarios wherein they would also add small talks and then fall box checks, and they will also check the integrations that the chatbot is doing. Uh, automation is done right now at an UI and API layer. Mostly Selenium is being used because most of it is JavaScript, so it basically uses Selenium. And then uh, some of the uh, uh, companies which I've seen is that they, they, they don't believe in UI layer, so they directly talk at the API layer, wherein they see how the response is being coming and uh, then validating them. One of the interesting facts that I've seen in QA is <clears throat> they're testing most of the time on the same training layer. So the data is not changing. Uh, every time the uh, you know they will train it once or twice and then they will just give it to QA and then they will not pop it. So, uh, that is one of the things that are there in majority of the, the companies. Uh, there are models that are being trained by the engineers. Um, those are specific uh, to the model engineers who actually write the models. And then uh, as a QA, I know we, we would ne never get to monitor them. So how are they behaving while we are conversing with the bot? And and what are the stats available? So you know most of the QAs do not have access to uh, there are analytical tools uh, which are there in the market, but uh, they are quite technical in nature. And most of the QA, uh, who, whoever is manual QA, doesn't understand uh, uh, the technical bit of the QA. In at the is what's the result here is that most of the time, ninety percent of the time, the bot breaks and nobody understands why it is breaking. Um, most of the time, if you look at the bots that are there in the market, uh, they, they basically go into fallback mode and then they do not recover. You just need to hit the page, uh, refresh, uh, you need to refresh the page or, you know, you, there is no way that you can reset it. Uh, so what are the issues in QA uh, that, that, uh, that are there? One is that bots are continuously evolving and story creation is a problem. There is no way or no easy way to create stories. There are a lot of edge cases that can be there for in, while we are testing chatbot, but it becomes extremely difficult. If you look at uh, different stacks in the market, it's it's where that you would need to go and manually write them. You may end up, uh, uh, you know, not having the right structure. It would start giving issues. So nobody's there to validate. 
Uh, one of the important things and the issue is that there is no tool to manage stories of it. So let's assume that there is a company who has got 1,000 stories and then we have automated it somehow and then we are executing it. You never know what's the story coverage there. That means whether I'm 80% done and 100% done, you know, there is no no way that you can basically measure it. Uh, your training data may not correspond to, correspond to new stories. It's a live case that I've seen wherein uh, the production data is never brought to QA and the model was never being trained. And that's the reason, you know, since the stories are changing, uh, the data is changing, the underlying data is changing, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't match up uh, that way. Most of the tools that are there in the market from automation perspective are all record and playback. So they encourage you to do a record and playback, but in the in the in the actual conditions uh, uh, these are a part of part and parcel wherein you can create stories with with the with the idea but then uh, it is not the way it is in the actual conditions uh, one of the biggest problem is that say for an example if i'm in raza and i'm using raza and i'm going to some other provider or some other provider raza there is no portability available very easy portability available right now uh, so Companies do fear moving from one platform to another, and they think a lot. Uh, I have been into a condition wherein we were following simple state transition way of uh, managing our chats, but then we did not want to go and check on Raza or any other platform because of a reason that our underlying data is too complex and too heavy. Um, there are no centralized dashboards available right now. There are tools which are coming up with this. They say that uh, uh, they say that you know we have dashboards, but they have their own platform uh, to support it. There is nothing called as that. If I am using Raza, if I am using say uh, any other provider, uh, I will not be able to unify the results in both the stack. So that's missing, uh, which actually uh doesn't tell me that you know how how many intents are matched and how the slots have been identified or uh, and how the entities are validated how is the confidence score of the model so there is no such uh, details available which actually rolls up at an organization level uh, there is no easy way to reset the failed part that's the problem with the qa so we may need to call an api which can reset it once it is stuck it is stuck Bot versioning is a mess, uh, wherein uh, the A-B testing becomes really difficult uh, because uh, there is no uh, standard way of uh, bot versioning available and every tool has their own way of versioning. So when you're working with multiple stacks in the same organization, it becomes extremely difficult. Uh, one of the things which I've seen while uh, I was doing QA is uh, the multilingual testing, wherein uh, one language is in English, one is in different uh, language. Difficult to test them. Uh, you know, most of the cases we have to make two separate bots, uh, which is actually a, a real pain for the QA. There is one more problem that we have seen in the QA is that uh, if you have a high confidence score, uh, you know, it's also a problem because it will start predicting the same thing again and again. So the data is same for multiple intents. Uh, you can predict one with the highest confidence score, so which may be an incorrect way uh, for the model to basically predict. So how can uh, we know where my bot is failing? Um, so how to make your test effective? Uh, one way to do it is that uh, you create scenarios which actually includes your happy path, contextual questions, digressions, uh, domain specific questions, stateless conversation. So what we do is that when we do QA, we basically segregate our scenarios into these buckets. Uh, and then what we do is we try to see, you know, how they are performing at each levels and then fine tune the way the chatbot works. Um, we also have seen that, you know, you need to map your entities properly for common scenarios like, uh, if I'm paying the fee for a bus and also I'm paying a fee for my tuition, okay, and if I do not have uh, uh, entities for, say, bus, I'll just mention it like uh, 
like uh, data then it always uh, map to my tuition fees even if i will be asking for the bus fee so that is where uh, you know we may need to see that uh, you need to have your entities which are flow based and you know and map to the stories uh automated test uh, should consume all stories and run them each time as part of the regression so what we do is uh, here and you know uh, we have created one wrapper for exclusive for aza where when we we used to extract all the stories and then try to automate it so we basically use the data and then if you uh, if you look at the small uh, excel here we used to basically also understand how the coverage is managed so we basically used to have a flow state flow state which and we, we basically used to green them as and when we, we are touching the stories and the lines of it uh so no automated tests uh, you know other other tools are uh, right now consuming the stories which are exactly present for the in for any of the tool and uh, you know they are not able to run them effectively at the time um uh, the other way to do it is that you should have a story coverage visualization which actually tells you how the coverage is at each scenario level uh, and then you know basically it would also tells you that whether you have sufficient in data that to test your test your bot and uh, that sufficient data is actually mapping to different <clears throat> uh, stories um we prefer uh, to do manual testing if you're at, at least doing manual testing to use a bot emulation product like raza x or bot front because uh, it becomes extremely easy uh, if uh, things are not matching and it's where there are easy ways in raza x to basically match them to uh, the things uh, other than that uh, we need to have a centralized dashboarding which actually gives us the confusion metrics the decision recall and f1 score for the model also checks the also gives us the value for cumulative accuracy and then uh, one of the important thing that we have seen is cross validation is one of the uh, coolest way to uh, actually measure how your bot is what performance is so that's important um we also need to do exhaustive testing that means you need to have all the permutation and combination of the data set we always believe in qa that we should not be doing exhaustive testing but in case of chatbots we have to do this uh it basically ensures bot resiliency against uh, the different kind of data that could be put across uh we need to also check the integration across platforms that means if you guys are like if the platform is talking to say an api which basically brings some data in uh, so those are integration points with the bot and obviously the hooks or uh, the web hooks uh one of the important thing which is needs to be done and uh, to check the fault tolerance uh, by performing uh, performance testing that means you need to check how is your bot responding against the load uh, that are available so what we do in qa is that we push uh we push the uh, load onto our server and then start talking with our bot to understand in extreme load conditions how was your bot is talking and obviously during this how your session is being managed because we have seen that uh, most of the condition the session is get it gets overlapped and and and, and data like you know bot gets confused at the end of it um apart from that uh, we should we also doing security testing wherein we need to check the api interactions because one of the uh one of the thing that is that are most critical these days for security because bot is also a kind of a front end so bot should not reveal any security related information uh, uh and you know uh, through the apis that it connects uh, we also need to quickly check the type uh, typing speed because uh, we, we basically can simulate uh, the typing speed uh, while through automation and that is where Uh, we would basically check if bot is breaking or not. Uh, obviously, the punctuations and typo errors are very important from the security point of view uh, because it tends to break the bot and basically, uh, you know, the bot gets compromised. Uh, some other KPIs to track: one is the activity volume, how much volume of information coming in uh, to our bots, to our bots on our backend, and then the bounce rate, uh, retention rate. 
uh, the open sessions count, uh, the, the conversation length, uh, the goal completion rate in terms of uh, how uh, the, the goals that you have identified for your bot are being measured. And then the user feedback, which is one of the most important things these days, that after the bot gave a response, you actually check whether uh, user is, uh, you basically do it for user engagement to basically check if your bot is going in the right direction, which actually can be an added parameter for your bot to, uh, to, to verify if the, if the conversation with the human is, 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 uh, is okay. And then if, if it is not, then basically pass it on to a human, you know, that way. So you can have those intelligent mechanism built. Uh, one of the important thing is the fallback rate, which actually has confusion rate, the reset rate, and human takeover rate, which actually also talks about the stability of the product. Having said that, uh, these are some ways that we basically do our QA and make our bot really, really effective. These are, uh, in five minutes, it's not possible to give all that information, but these are very, very high level information to which you can distribute.